Hello everyone, I'm Andrea, or Miss Fackelman to my students, and today I'm going to teach you all about Wayne Tebow. Wayne Tebow was born November 15th of 1920 and turned 100 years old last year. Wayne Tebow was born in Arizona and grew up in California. When he was a teenager, he apprenticed at Walt Disney Studio, those drawing in-between scenes for cartoon characters like Goofy, Pinocchio, and Jiminy Cricket. Wayne Tebow would go on to study at Frank Wiggins Trade School in Los Angeles and would work as a cartoonist and designer in California and New York City. He also worked as an artist in First Motion Picture Unit of United States Army Air Forces. In 1949, he enrolled at San Jose State University before transferring to Sacramento State College, earning a bachelor's and master's by 1952. He would teach at Sacramento City College in 1960 and became assistant professor at the University of California. During this time, from 1956 to 1957, he took a one-year break from teaching to go to New York City and was later influenced by famous artists of the time. Around 1962, he became recognized in the art world for his paintings and artwork that would show window displays with sweet treats, pastries, and other delicious foods. His artwork has gained him in world recognition, awards, and financial success. Just one of his paintings that was sold at Christie's earned a staggering $8.5 million. Now let's take a look at some of Wayne Tebow's artwork. His choice of paint helps him capture the texture of sweet treats. Oil paint takes a long time to dry, but he used it to create really thick layers of what looks like icing dripping out of the canvas. He also makes his sweet treats look three-dimensional on a flat surface by using three-dimensional shapes like cylinders and cubes. He also adds shadows and highlights to create the impression of light shining on a solid object. In this particular video, we are going to copy his style from when he painted gumball machines. Now let's grab a nice new piece of paper, whatever coloring supplies you want to use, find a nice comfortable place to work, and let's get started. The first part of the gumball machine that I'm going to draw is the globe. Now, I sometimes have trouble drawing perfect circles, and even if I do draw it without the help of any supplies, um, I usually need <clears throat> some extra time. So to make this a little quick, I am going to grab a bowl. You can use a bowl or a plate or whatever helps. Make sure it's in the right spot, and press down on the round object you picked while you drag your pencil all around it. I know that there are gumball machines that have a little top to it that makes it look like they're wearing a fancy little red hat, but Wayne Tebow's gumball machines that he had in his paintings did not have anything. They were completely bare on top, so I'm going to leave that right there. Now I'm going to draw a curved line that kind of looks like a smile on the bottom of this globe. There we go. Now let's draw two straight lines that slant. They don't really they don't really come down straight. They come at a slant that come out from under each side of this line right here. Now let's draw a curved line to make the bottom. I know some of you wanna make it flat, but if we want it to look a little more three-dimensional and we want it to look as curved as the bottom part of the globe right here, we want to draw another curved line that wraps around the bottom. Now let's draw a big capital H in the middle of our gumball machine. It's going to almost go up to the top, but then stop before it does. The reason we're drawing this capital H is because the bottom is going to be that slot where the gumballs come out, and the top is gonna to be that other little slot where you stick your quarter in. What I'm going to do is first draw what looks like a U inside the bottom, of my H. Now, I'm going to draw another U on top, but it's not going to be so big that it fills that other half the H. It's going to be a teeny tiny U that's kind of floating towards the top. Not so big, but big enough so that you could stick a quarter into it. Now, I'm going to draw a straight line on either side to connect this U to either side of the top of my H. There we go. Now, remember that lever that you have to turn to get your quarter to go into the machine so then the gumballs come out? What we're gonna do is draw a circle right underneath that little U that we put on top. And then let's draw a rectangle on either side. 
Now, you don't have to do this, but if you want to put the price of the gumballs on your machine, you can write 25 cents. I'll do that here. I'm going to write the number two, number five, and then draw the cents sign, which kind of looks like a little C with a line down the middle. I'll do that over here also. It's optional, but you can do it if you want to. This way people know if they have enough change to get some gumballs. 25 cents. Now I want to draw the horizon line. That's the line that separates the sky from the landscape. But in this case, it's just a gumball machine sitting on a table. So the horizon line is going to separate the wallpaper from the table. So I'm gonna draw a line that disappears behind the gumball machine, comes out the other side. Right, there's the table. But now we also want to capture where the light is coming from. Let's say that the light is coming from somewhere off this corner of the paper. We have to draw the light spot or the highlight, which shows where the light is reflecting on the glass of the globe. So I'm gonna draw an oval. This is going to be the light that's being reflected on the glass. And if the light is shining over here, that means there should be a shadow on this side. It doesn't have to be a big shadow, but I'm just going to draw what kind of looks like an oval that's hiding underneath my gumball machine. There we go, so I've got my highlight and I've got my cast shadow right here. Next, we have to put in the gumballs. It's not a gumball machine without gumballs. Try to make all of your gumballs the same size. And remember, the smaller your gumballs are, the more exhausted you're going to be after drawing so many gumballs. Right now, they don't even look like, like gumballs, they look like peas. <laughs> We don't, I don't see anyone uh, paying 25 cents to get a handful of peas, but hey, some people uh, love eating peas on a regular basis. Now, I'm going to draw a quarter sized gumball right here. There we go. Now I'm gonna draw another quarter sized gumball over here. Yeah, they're about the same size. It's okay if they don't uh, perfectly match. As long as they're about the same size, should be good. Now I'm gonna draw another one here and another gumball here. Let's draw some more quarter-sized gumballs on the bottom of your gumball machine. Let's not forget that we want to create some overlapping gumballs. For those of you who are less familiar with overlapping, it's where you give the impression of space by drawing some objects that are hiding behind other objects in front of them. What we want to do to give the impression of bunches of gumballs inside the glass, we are going to draw a half a circle that's peeking out from behind these two. So it looks like there's another gumball, but try to make it look like it's half the, it's like another, Try to make it look like it's the same size as the other gumballs it's hiding behind. For example, if I have this gumball right here, should I draw a teeny tiny one right here? Nope, for this picture, I wanna make all these gumballs look like they're about the same size. Now, I'm going to draw another gumball that's hiding behind these two. There we go. Now, I'm gonna draw another gumball that's hiding behind these two. Because there's not so little space that I would just draw half of a circle, I'm gonna draw part of a circle right here, another part of a circle right there. There we go, now it looks like there's a circle that's kind of hidden between these two gumballs. So we can draw some more half circles, we can draw some more overlapping gumballs, or you can draw some more full gumballs that are just floating around inside your gumball machine. Let's add some more gumballs to fill our gumball machine. All right, I think I have enough gumballs here. To make it look a little more interesting, I'm going to draw another gumball, but it's gonna be hanging out on the outside of my gumball machine. Now, because I have a cast shadow behind my gumball machine, I'm gonna have a little cast shadow underneath that gumball. Now, since I've added a light spot right here to the globe part of my gumball machine, I also wanna add a light spot to each of my gumballs. It's not so complicated, you can make it just a tiny circle, but remember, if the light source is way up here and the highlight is towards the top left area of this globe, that's where all the light spots should be on these gumballs. It should be towards the top, to the left, towards the top, to the left, towards the top, to the left. So put a light spot or a highlight 
on the top towards the left of each of your gumballs. I'm done with my gumball machine. Now's the time to color. You can use whatever you have at home, like crayons or colored pencils or markers. If you also have gel pens, you can go right ahead and use those. Now, whatever supplies you use, make sure that you do not scribble. Fill in the cheese holes, as I've said to all of my students. Make sure that you leave these highlights white because they're the light being reflected on the shiny surfaces. They need to stay white. And so should this highlight up here on the globe and on the gumball that's hanging, hanging out or sitting outside the gumball machine. And the cast shadow needs to be black or you can make it a dark gray, but you can make your gumball machine and your gumballs and the background, whatever colors you want. Just remember to take your time, fill in those cheese holes. All right, let's grab our coloring supplies, play some nice music and finish our pictures. Great job, everybody. If you are new to this channel, please click subscribe below so you can get notified whenever there's a new video on Art with Andrea. If you wanna say what you liked about this video or say what you think I should draw next, leave a comment below. And above all else, everybody, stay creative, have a good day, and I'll see you all next time.